Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Alchemy. It's been a hot minute since I've made a video, and that's for a variety of reasons, but I won't really try to make any excuses. But what I will do is try to ease back into making videos by focusing on something that I think will be kind of kind of easy for me to talk about at length. So I've noticed that videos about INFJs are kind of a hot commodity right now, and to be honest, they're probably always a hot commodity just because, I don't know, the internet might be a hub for introverted intuitives and obviously there's a lot about the INFJ profile that, that speaks to people even when they might be mistyping themselves. But again, that is totally a topic for another conversation. I just wanted to take this chance to talk about a topic that's kind of dear to my heart, which is avoiding the INFJ door slam. So there are plenty of other videos out there on YouTube where people talk about what the door slam actually is, and I don't want to get too into defining that term, but I think that I do owe you at least some surface level attempt in case you don't want to leave my channel and jump to some other channel. So you don't need me to tell you that INFJs tend to care for people really deeply. Being in the presence of an INFJ can sometimes feel like you're actually being seen for the first time in a long time, maybe even the first time ever. And they can just be so attentive as listeners and they're very validating. And whenever I spend time with an INFJ, it's often the case that I will walk away from that interaction feeling as if I just spent time with somebody who has been my BFF five ever. But there's always that chance that you're going to wake up someday and that INFJ pal is going to want nothing to do with you. How do we make sense of that paradox? So here's my understanding of the mechanics behind the door slam. INFJs lead with the function introverted intuition, which is basically like having these metaphysical blinders on, right? Um, INFJs have a very particular vision for how they want their life to play out and just the future in general and they can they can foresee all of the different dominoes that need to fall in order to get them where they want to be. So if you are in the good graces of an INFJ and you're fortunate enough to be included in that NI vision, that's when you kind of reap the benefits of their auxiliary extroverted feeling. The issue then is that there's a really weird personality polarity problem at play where the compassionate INFJ is drawing in people who are so desperate for that validation that those people end up leaning on the INFJ too much, often um, disregarding or not even thinking about the needs of the INFJ or their own personal autonomy. And so then the always accommodating INFJ tells himself or herself everything is totally fine I can continue doing this everything is sustainable nothing is wrong my house is not on fire they're gonna strain themselves for the sake of this underdog that they see so much potential in you know in the worst of cases they'll even tolerate physical abuse or emotional abuse until you know all at once everything changes, they no longer see a place in that intuitive vision for the other person. And because an INFJ can be nice to the devil himself, if they ever encountered him, they often think that the only way to really escape the relationship that they're in is to shut the door completely get the heck out of there. It's not even that you're dead to them or that they hate you. It's that they don't even, you're not even part of their radar anymore. You're not part of the storybook that they're living. So the key question is how do we avoid this particular state of affairs, right? First of all, you need to do some real reflection on your personal needs. You need a, need an awareness of of what you're trying to extract from that relationship with the INFJ or INFJs in your life, whether they be friends or romantic partners, you want to recognize the kind of void that you're attempting to fill and then, you know, realize that objectification is bad even if that particular object is 
the holy grail in your mind. That's just a different level of dehumanization. You have to take charge of your own needs. If you have a tendency to vent vomit all over your INFJ, then maybe you should schedule an appointment with a therapist, somebody who will just hear you out. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I've had therapeutic relationships where all that I really got out of the relationship was having someone that I could speak to. I didn't really have an agenda of getting better in mind. I just, I was in a place where I didn't have a lot of community and I was leaving a relationship and I was like, okay, I just need somebody that I can talk to who's going to be objective and neutral and there's no shame in that. So if you're buying into that stigma, you got to get over it pronto, bud. You can also think about journaling a little bit more to process your emotions. You don't need to burden your INFJ with every single existential crisis that you have. And I'm not trying to say that you need to do everything on your own. It can also be useful to kind of diversify your emotional portfolio a little bit. For me, I try to distribute the weight of my angst fairly evenly among my friends so that no one person is getting too overwhelmed by, by carrying my baggage. Secondly, you need to try to be aware of the needs of your INFJ because their natural inclination is going to be to focus on the needs of others first. They're not even gonna realize that they're upset and that they're in an unsustainable situation until it's too late and they can't bear it anymore and that's when that door slam comes. And you might say, well, it's not my fault that they're overly accommodating and that they don't know how to draw boundaries and maybe you're right in a manner of speaking, but everybody has different gifts and we pay a price for all of our gifts by being weaker in certain areas. So that's just the price the INFJ pays. And it is your fault if you are if you are leeching the life out of somebody when you consciously know that they struggle to draw those boundaries and be more assertive with their needs. And besides, you shouldn't be so petty as to fixate on whose fault it is. The priority should be salvaging the relationship if it's even salvageable. You need to ask the INFJ in your life what they need from you and you need to mean it. They're really good at seeing through these half-hearted, half-assed gestures. For every venting session that you have with the INFJ in your life, you need to realize that they are probably also fighting these invisible silent battles within their own psyche. And it's also good to keep in mind that people who are good listeners usually become that way because they have personally endured the agony of not being heard and they don't want to ever inflict that experience onto someone else. So give your INFJ space to be heard, be the INFJ that your INFJ needs, and it might take a little bit of gentle persistence um, in order to get them to come out of their shell, but if you keep with it and say, hey, I really appreciate everything that you do for me, and I don't want our friendship to be asymmetrical in any way, so I'm always here for you. Um, just putting that out there. And that's all you have to say. Don't pressure them into anything. That's not going to be a good move. You can't strong arm somebody into being more vulnerable than they're ready to be. Finally, if the INFJ door slam does happen to you, the main thing that you want to do is not personalize it. You have to recognize that everybody is on his or her own journey and sometimes things aren't meant to be. This one time I dated an INFJ for about a year and a half, and I could tell towards the end that things were about to dissolve. I just knew that she was finished with the particular dynamic that we had created. And, you know, things had seemed really good up until a point when I could just feel the light switch get flipped. And,. She wasn't replying to any of my messages. She was sick for a little while, and I kept trying to be sweet by saying, hey, I'm going to um, come over and make you some soup if that's what you want. And she's like, nah, I don't, I just need to be alone for a bit. And then 
inevitably the the moment of breaking up came and I was in a lot of pain and I didn't handle it as perfectly as a person could because I just turned into a blubbering pile of fleshy pain. But ultimately, in that final conversation we had, the message that I kept trying to reiterate was, hey, even though I'm in a lot of pain, you have to honor this roadmap that you have in your head. You can't force something if it's not working for you. And I really cherish the time that we've had together. And I cherish how brave you've been by coming to me and having this conversation face to face. And I know that it's terrifying to be on either end of the situation, so kudos to you, and best of luck with whatever comes next. So that was pretty far from a lot of the behavior that she had seen in other breakups, which, you know, involved screaming and throwing things and just like general resentment, like how could you, how dare you ruin my life by breaking up with me? Anyway, the point that I want to get at is, although it took some time, we actually eventually restored our friendship in some way. So by demonstrating that I wasn't trying to cling to something and that I wasn't going to try to guilt her for, for our situation, I simultaneously revealed myself to have a sufficiently noble character that that I, that I was permitted to be part of that NI worldview eventually, if that makes sense. Of course, there is no guarantee that being good and doing the right thing is going to save your relationship with your INFJ, whatever that relationship might be. But the Stoics believed that virtue is its own reward. And I, I agree with that. So if you love something, let it go. Um, okay, Elsa. That's all I've really got. I hope that this was helpful for somebody. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe um, and leave a comment. I would love to uh, interact and see if I, if I sparked anything. So thanks so much. Till next time.